Welcome to the second video in a series of video tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. Here is what you'll learn about in this video. We will begin with an overview of QAQC requirements. What does QAQC really mean? Next, we will differentiate between the terms accuracy and precision. Finally, we will cover some chlorine residual analysis tips to improve success with Method 334.0 requirements. EPA Method 334.0 is a QAQC protocol for chlorine analyzers used to collect regulatory data. Basically, QAQC refers to a program or set of procedures or activities with an overall goal of ensuring that the end product is of a certain quality that meets applicable standards. A QAQC program should include steps to prevent a poor quality product from being produced, as well as ways to identify and correct a defective end product. Overall, the goal of a laboratory QAQC program is to ensure the accuracy and precision of any sample results that are produced. It is critical to review these two terms, accuracy and precision. These words are often used interchangeably, but there are important differences in their meaning and application. Accuracy refers to the degree of exactness or correctness of a result. The target on the left is a depiction of the concept of accuracy. All of the marks are centered around the bullseye, indicating results close to the targeted area. Precision, on the other hand, refers to the repeatability of a result across successive attempts. The target on the right is a depiction of the concept of precision. All of the marks are tightly grouped in a small area, indicating a high degree of repeatability. The target in the middle of the screen is an illustration of both accuracy and precision. Each of the marks is centered around the bullseye and there is very little variation in their position. This is the ultimate goal of a laboratory QAQC program, data that is both precise and accurate. The Grab Sample Protocol for Method 334.0 requires the use of an EPA-approved method for reporting chlorine data. There are seven methods that meet this criteria, six are approved for use in Pennsylvania, and are included in this table. We will focus on Standard Method 4500 CLG, the DPD colorimetric method. The Grab Sample method requirements of Method 334.0 apply to each of these methods, However, the majority of water systems use a DPD colorimetric method that follows 4500 CLG. Since a laboratory QAQC program involves processes intended to assure the quality of lab results, considerations for basic analytical technique and sampling supplies should be part of the QAQC program. So we will next cover some basic considerations to keep in mind related to sampling supplies for the DPD colorimetric method. Operators should always be aware of the reagents present in their sampling kits. Consider the intended application and use the appropriate reagents. Total chlorine DPD reagent should not be used at the entry point of a groundwater system, while free chlorine DPD should not be used in the distribution of a chloraminated system. All reagents should be within the manufacturer's specified expiration date. Expired reagents should be disposed of immediately. Do not leave expired reagents in your sampling kit because they could be inadvertently used. The amount of DPD must be appropriate for the sample size. If the sample size is too large, the result may be artificially low due to insufficient DPD for complete reaction. If the sample size is too small, the result may be artificially high due to interference from excessive reagent. Operators should also be aware of the size and condition of their sample cells as well as the parameters for which they are used. For one common manufacturer, a 25 milliliter sample cell can be used for low range, but the high range requires a specific cell with a small light path length. Each parameter should have dedicated sample cells. It is a good idea to label your sample cells so they are not used for the wrong analysis. DPD reagent for total chlorine contains potassium iodide, which can bias free chlorine results high. 
Sample cells should be oriented properly and consistently in the cell holder to ensure the appropriate path length and to account for potential blemishes. Some sample cells have a mark or shape that is intended for consistent orientation. Sample cells should always be kept clean and free from scuffs, scratches, chips, and cracks. If staining or discoloration is present, sample cells can be acid washed with nitric or hydrochloric acid. If any physical imperfections or damage is identified, the sample cell should be replaced. Sample cells should be wiped thoroughly prior to zeroing and analysis to avoid fingerprints and smudges that may affect the measured results. It is critical to follow each method according to the manufacturer's protocol. One area often overlooked is mixing procedure. One common manufacturer has three separate mixing procedures for various ranges. Proper mixing may seem like a minor step, but it ensures the complete reaction of all chlorine with DPD, as well as avoids introducing interference, either from unreacted DPD reagent or air bubbles from overly vigorous shaking. Also keep in mind the range of the method. Only measurements within the analytical range published by the manufacturer should be considered valid. Here are a few additional tips to eliminate sources of error. Use a two-step rinsing process between analyses. Start by thoroughly rinsing your sample cell at least twice with reagent-grade water to remove all traces of residual reagent. Then rinse it again with a small volume of sample to displace the remaining water and eliminate any unwanted dilution of the sample. Measure your meniscus carefully and consistently to make sure the volume of sample is appropriate and consistent for each analysis. Always measure sample volume with the meniscus at eye level. Be consistent with how you analyze each sample. Pay attention to the volume of sample, the orientation of the sample cell, your mixing procedure, and how thoroughly you wipe your sample cells. Finally, be sure to zero between each sample. Use your measured sample before any reagent is added to zero. Let's review the key points from this video. A laboratory QAQC program is intended to make sure that analytical data that is produced is both accurate and precise. For chlorine residual analysis using the DPD method, operators should remember several important considerations regarding their reagents, sample cells, mixing procedures, and analytical ranges, and proper analytical technique to ensure consistency. In the next video in this series, we will review the use of primary standards relative to Method 334.0, including how to plan, calculate, and perform the necessary primary standard dilutions.